smartest guy in the Bible? Jesus? Abraham, because he knew a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do you know who the first person was to have a tablet? A tablet? Technically, it was Moses, because he was downloading information to his tablet from the cloud. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, if you need to build an ark, I know a guy. Cheesy. I like it. All right. You know what Jesus' greatest miracle was? No, what was Jesus' greatest miracle? Having 12 close friends in his 30s. Okay. <clears throat> How long did Cain hate his brother? As long as he was able. Okay, that was good. I'll give you that one. At what time of day was Adam created? A little before Eve. All right. <clears throat> what do they call pastors in Germany? German Shepherds. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heaven and rested. Then God created man and rested. Then God created woman. Since then, neither God or man has rested. I'm not going to laugh at that one. Smart man. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Why didn't they play a card game on the ark? because Noah was standing on the deck. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right. Which servant of God was the worst lawbreaker in the Bible? Which servant of God was the worst lawbreaker? I don't know that one. Moses, he broke all the Ten Commandments at once. I see. The final score is... Well, kids, you have been an eyewitness this week to some of the worst Bible pun jokes and dad jokes ever invented. And speaking of eyewitness, this week you get an opportunity to be eyewitnesses, just like the people in the Bible were eyewitnesses to Jesus' resurrection. You're going to have a chance to be an eyewitness and discover a little bit more about how you can be an eyewitness during this lesson. We'll see you in a bit. The first message that Jesus gives us, he first gave to his disciples. They were to be witnesses and give an account for what happened on Easter. An eyewitness has to pay close attention and remember what they saw. Let's see if you can do that in this game called What's Missing? On the table, you'll see many different objects. I'm going to give you one minute to study the objects on the table and then the fun will begin. Object after object will be removed and you will have to figure out which item has been taken away. How observant are you? Let's find out. Okay, can you guys guess what I removed? What do you think? That's right, the cupcake. All right, this time, Take a good look and everything on the table is going to be moved all around. We're going to make it a little bit harder. All right, let's see what I take away this time. Can you guys guess what I took away this time? It's a lot harder now, isn't it? Do you know? 
That's right, the Capri Sun. Good job, you guys. Okay, let's do it again. What do you think this time? This one seems even harder, doesn't it? The star sunglasses. You guys are really good at this game. All right, last time. Do you know now? The shoe. Good job, you guys. I had so much fun playing this game with you. We had such a great series about the mysteries of Easter. Before I ask some review questions, I need you to do something for me. I need you to pay very, very close attention to my surroundings because I'm gonna see how well you are paying attention to some of the fine details, okay? Are you guys ready? Make sure you're paying attention. Here we go, here's some review. The first week, what is the first thing that we talked about? Well, the first thing that we talked about was Jesus riding on a donkey, right? And they use palm trees and they worship Jesus and we call that Palm Sunday. So that was week one. Week two, do you remember week, week two what they did? They sat at a table, Jesus ate with his disciples, the Last Supper. So they, they had the Last Supper and they talked and they celebrated about the Passover. And then the last week we talked about Jesus being crucified, didn't we? on the cross, but we all know what happened. He did not stay dead, did he at all? He rose in three days. We have one more exciting part of this story. Before we begin our lesson, let's see how observant you were. And I'm gonna ask you some questions about See how well you were paying attention because there was a lot of things going on around me. So, here we go. Okay guys, do you remember what person number one was wearing on their head? Think about it. The first person that came behind me, were they wearing a wig? Were they wearing a bandana? What were they wearing? If you said a chicken hat, you were right. <laughs> okay, the next one is, did you notice what animal came behind me? This was person number two. Was this maybe a cow? Was this maybe a giraffe, maybe an eagle? Hmm, let's see how good you are. If you said a dog, you are correct again. Okay, where, let me ask you this, where was person number three going? Were they going to the mountains? Were they going to the desert? Remember what they were wearing. They were going somewhere really fun. If you said the beach, then you are one smart cookie. Good job. What did, let me ask you this one. What did person number four, who is a Roman soldier, what did they have on their back? Did they have a sword? Did they have maybe a shield? Hmm, this one was kind of tricky. If you said wings, then you were really paying attention. Good job. And last but not least, person number five. What did this person have on their shoulder? Hmm, think about that. What was on their shoulder? Was it a shoulder pad? Was it maybe a monkey? Of course not. You guys have got this. You've gotten every answer right, I'm sure of it. It was a parrot, wasn't it? Well, I just want to thank you guys so much for playing the game. You all did a great job. Now, let's get up, get up on your feet, and let's worship with Tatum. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice at the same old lies, if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need 
We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. But we've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. Last week we learned that Jesus died on the cross, then was put in a tomb. But did he stay in that grave? No, silly, of course not. He rose back to life after three days. So what happened after that? That's the big question, huh? Now let's listen to the story to find out. All right, everyone, go grab your Bibles, get ready, because we're about to read an incredible story. So open up to Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. You ready? During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and to restore our kingdom? He replied, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. They are not for you to know, but you will receive a power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Wow, what an amazing story. Who did Jesus appear to after the resurrection? He appeared to many people. He walked on the earth for 40 days. Isn't that incredible? So here's a few questions we have. What do you think he did for those 40 days? Why do you think he stayed around? Well, from the few clues we have, we know a little bit about what he did from the Bible. He taught us and showed people that he was really alive. He even appeared to more than 500 people at once. That's crazy if you ask me. He also performed miracles like the time when his disciples were fishing and he told them to cast their nets on the opposite side. 
And guess what? They caught more fish than they could even handle. Isn't that incredible how God works miracles like that? In our reading, Acts 1-8 tells us about the promise Jesus made. And do you remember what that promise is? That's right. He said the Holy Spirit would come and give his people power. So what mission did he give them? Do you remember? He told them that to be witnesses into all the world. Isn't that awesome? So the people will know the good news about God. They would know the gospel. So do you think he was talking to the disciples when he said this? No, nope, not just the disciples. He was talking to everyone. He wants everyone to know about God and be a witness. So where did Jesus tell the disciples to go and talk about him? Do you remember? That's right. Jerusalem was the city the disciples were in. And he also told them to go into Judea was surrounding area and Samaria was farther away. He didn't just stop there. So what was the last place he said to go? It wasn't Samaria, do you remember? He said they would go to the ends of the earth. That's a lot of places. I want you to think how big the earth is. Isn't that crazy? Go to the ends of the earth. So here's our last question. What happened after Jesus told them to tell the world about him? That's right, Jesus rose into heaven what an amazing day it was and what an amazing story to tell. So after the very first Easter, Jesus gave us his disciples as a special assignment to share his good news with the world. Now let's watch a video and learn how we can be a witness to our world today. God's heart is for the world, the whole world. God loves every person in every city, town, and village in every home, hut, and yurt. They speak different languages, they eat different foods, they believe in different things, and God loves them all. But they don't all know about God. Billions of people all over the world don't know about God's love. They've never heard of the gospel. They don't know that He sent His Son, Jesus, to rescue them, to give them hope. Not everyone knows, but they can, if someone goes to tell them. That's why God made me, to worship Him and to share His gospel. I'm still learning what it means to follow Jesus and what it means to be more like Him. But one thing I know for sure is that Jesus loves the world, the whole world. I want to love the world like Jesus. I want to be a kid on mission. I have a part in sharing the gospel with everyone everywhere right now. Hey kids, so, you know, in our lesson, we're talking about discipleship. And Jesus, before he went to heaven, he told his disciples, all 12 of them, hey, go into the othermost parts of the earth and tell everyone about me. Tell everyone that you can find, tell them of who I am, that Jesus was the Messiah. He wanted them to go into the darkest places, the scary places, the places that no one thought anyone would be there. Jesus wanted people to, his disciples to go there and tell them about Jesus, tell them about what he did, the miracles that he performed. And I just wanted to share a little bit about my testimony about what Jesus did for me. You know, I grew up in church and just like all of you, I went through the Bible school classes, I learned about Moses and Noah, but two years ago Jesus saved me from a really, really dark place. And I knew who Jesus was, I knew what he could do, but I just didn't want anything to do with him anymore. And still he saved me. He still came and he, he helped me out of this really dark situation, really dark place that I was in. And that's what I want to share my heart with all of you, is that all of you know who Jesus is. You, you've learned through our lessons, you've learned what he can do, all the stories that we've told. and discipleship it's it's just that it's knowing and loving who Jesus is and wanting to share that with everyone Jesus has put the Holy Ghost in all of you there's a fire in all of you all of you have this beautiful faith that you love Jesus with all of your hearts every time when I see y'all in worship y'all are just thrilled and 
you, you can't wait to express how much you love the Lord. And you've got to share that with other people. You can't hide that fire that's inside of every one of you. You can't hide that from the world. You can't hide that from your friends. You can't hide that from your family. You can't hide that from people you don't even know. You've got to share that with everyone. Because that is what Jesus calls us to do. He wants us to go into the uttermost parts of the earth. Places into the unknown, the scary places, the places that you really don't want to be in. He wants you to go in those places and tell people about Jesus. So that's what I just want to encourage you kids is go out and tell people just about Jesus. Tell them about his love. Tell them what he can do for you. I love you guys and we'll see you in the next video. Guys, I'm so grateful that we had this opportunity to teach you guys our whole Easter lesson for this month of April. And I know April's almost over and we're going to begin May soon. We're not sure how long we're going to be doing these videos, but as long as we're doing them, we're going to have fun with them. So next week starts our new series and I cannot wait to show you guys what we're going to be talking about. We have all kinds of fun. But right now, I'd like everybody to gather with their family and let's pray together. And let's pray that we can enjoy this season that we're in right now. We don't know what's going to happen in May. We could all come back together in May and what a celebration that would be. It would be awesome to all be together. But in the meantime, let's be thankful for where we're at right now. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Remember what we always say. Let's pray out loud. Let's not just listen to Miss Kristen or hear our parents. But kids, I want you praying. If you have any prayer requests, anything that you want to pray about, if there's a sick person in your family, if maybe something happened at home where you feel frustrated about maybe your schoolwork or you're just frustrated about life right now, or maybe you're not getting along with your brother or sister even though you love them. Just all kinds of things happen in life that God knows because he hears every prayer. So let's pray together. God, I'm so thankful today that we serve you. I'm so thankful, God, that there is not one prayer that is too small or too big, God, that you that you don't want to listen to because you hear all prayers, God. You listen to each and every one of us because like we've talked about this whole month, you died on the cross for our sins. And God, Right now, Lord, let us take on this responsibility that you have given us to go out and spread your word, to spread your gospel. Lord, we know that, Jesus, there are so many people in this world that do not know you. They don't have the joy that we have. They don't have the peace that we have, Lord. And we pray tonight that, Jesus, your, your people, your children, would be your hands and your feet, God, that we would speak your words that, God, we would be your ears to listen to friends when they need to talk to us. God, give us wisdom. Let us be encouragers. Let us love one another. God, let us forgive people like you forgive us. Let us love people the way that you love us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love every one of you so much, and I cannot wait to do this next week. Bye-bye.